Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about URL parse, which is, well, a function for parsing URLs, and why you shouldn't use it. Um, the, the TLDR is it parses a format of URLs that most people have never seen. It's a fairly outdated spec, uh, and there's a better and faster function. Uh, so I'm going to show you that weird URL format and then show you what you should be using instead. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so both of, well, <laughs> spoilers, uh, the functions that we're going to be talking about today live in the urlib.parse standard library module. And uh, the URL parse function, which is usually what you would probably reach for if you're parsing URLs, given the name, uh, lives in that function as well, uh, lives in that module as well. And it parses URLs and basically splits them into their parts, uh, such that you can you know, figure out their variables and stuff. So you can see here, like we get we get the scheme out, we get the domain name. Uh, you know, it could be a uh, IP address or other things or ports or other stuff. There, uh, we get the path, which is this part here. There's this suspicious. Oh, you can't see because it's off screen. Dang it! <laughs> There's this suspicious empty params here, which is actually the thing that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, and then you have the query and the fragment. The fragment is the uh, the part after the Octothorpe, which is really only relevant if you're using you know, anchors in your page. Uh, but this part here, the params, is actually a another place that you can put variables in a URL, and uh, I've, I've seen this exactly one time in my entire career, and that was this really weird endpoint at Yelp that I don't know why it was designed this way, and uh, we ended up porting away from it anyway because there was all sorts of weird custom code to route to it, and it was just simpler to make a normal thing. Uh, but anyway, there is this special semicolon character which can be in a URL, and then you can have other params in here. Uh, and again, you can, you know, just like query strings, you can put an ampersand in here uh, to separate parameters uh, like this. And you'll see here that we now parse out a params field here, which contains this weird semicolon separated segment. Now, you almost certainly never use this, uh, but every time you call URL parse, you are paying some performance cost to try and parse this out. And the function that you actually want to use instead is the function called URL split, which is basically the same interface as URL parse, although it produces a slightly different output. It doesn't try and parse params. They end up inside path, which is kind of what you would expect. Uh, and it's significantly faster. Now, most code bases, the performance difference between these two isn't going to matter. Uh, however, a little anecdote. I switched from URL parse to URL split at Stripe, and it managed to make a 3% improvement in the startup time of the application that I was working on. So it, it can be a pretty significant part of performance if this is in the critical path. Uh, now, there is also URL unparse, which again, if you're using URL parse, you would use URL unparse. There's urllib.parse.url unsplit, which is the uh, the corresponding other function for this as well. So if you do that, you'll see that we're able to restore the original value. Um, now, there are also third-party libraries on PyPI, which may be a better choice than either of these. And I'll let you find those and figure that out yourself. Uh, but the, the easiest patch is to just find your URL parse calls and replace them with URL split. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.